morning. We are going to get started with our ceremony. I apologize for the last minute chair arrangement here. This is one of our larger classes. We have 16 of our future doctors of audiology here, and this is definitely our largest audience. So thank you all for coming this morning. I'm Dr. Tabitha Parent Buck, the chair of audiology and speech language pathology at AT Still University and Arizona School of Health Sciences. I'd like to welcome you to this special occasion. We are all here to recognize the 16 motivated future doctors of audiology sitting before me today to receive their white coats. I am certain that you are all proud of your students and all of the hard work they have completed to get to this stage of their educational journey. I want to let you know that for the class of 2027, that A.T. Still University has had a long heritage of delivering healthcare education with a dedication to preparing highly competent health professionals with a commitment to improving patient outcomes and a focus on whole person healthcare. This ceremony marks the, a very distinctive time in our AUD program at A.T. Still University, as this is our 25th anniversary for the Doctor of Audiology program. When we added the audiology program so many years ago, it was a wonderful fit with the mission of A.T. Still University, and you are all now part of that heritage. Students, you have taken many important steps to becoming a Doctor of Audiology. You started your journey when you decided that audiology was going to be the career for you. And then you decided to attend A.T. Still University. You have made changes in your study habits to adjust to graduate school. You probably made some changes in your sleep habits also, maybe by getting less of it, um, drinking more coffee. I tend to see lots of energy drinks around. You have probably or maybe relocated to hot and sunny Arizona. And you have made new friends. You are learning new concepts every day. You have provided services to children in the elementary schools and to seniors through falls prevention training. And you are now at a point in your education where you will be turning even more focus to the clinical rotations that you will have, so many of them to come in the future. To me, this is one of the most exciting points in your career path, and I hope it is for you too. This ceremony represents a tradition to honor your choice to become a healthcare professional and to help you along your way in that transition from student to professional and to becoming a doctor of audiology. The white coat symbolizes that transition. So again, I want to welcome you all here to beautiful Arizona and to prepare, as I prepare to turn the microphone over to others who are also here to share in your celebration with some words of advice, wisdom, and congratulations. But before we move on to introductions of the stage party, I would like to read a short message from Dr. Ann Lee Birch, the Dean of Arizona School of Health Sciences. She could not be here with us today, but she wanted the students to, being honored to hear her words of congratulations. So congratulations to the class of 2027 on receiving your white coats today. I know you have worked hard to reach this milestone, and, you, and this is your time to celebrate with your faculty, friends, and family today. Dr. Parent Buck has let me know that this is one of the most well-attended white coat ceremonies for audiology ever, and so I am sure that the atmosphere is jubilant and a little bit sunny. As I am not there to say this personally, I would like to extend a personal thanks to Dr. Parent Buck and her wonderful leadership uh, team and to all of the audiology faculty for their commitment to the excellent teaching, community engagement, research, and service from Dr. Ann Lee Birch. I'd like to turn the podium over to Dr. Zareen Mehta. Good morning and welcome to our students, family, friends um, on this beautiful sunny morning in Arizona. Um, so I'm going to introduce the stage party. Um, so to my left, we have uh, Dr. Norm Gevitz. He's the Senior Vice President, Academic Affairs, A.T. Still University. Then we have Dr. Elizabeth Palmer. Uh, she's the Interim Director of the AFA Balance and Hearing Institute. After that, we have Dr. Soha Garadet, Associate Professor in the Audiology Program. And then starting here, we have Dr. Elton Bordenay, <laughs> and he's in charge of our Matter of Balance uh, program that many of our students, all of them actually, have been through. 
And then we have Dr. Shali Baltadano. She is the clinical coordinator for the program. And after that, we have our keynote speaker, Brianna Thornton. Brianna Thornton is our own graduate. She graduated in the class of 2011, and she currently is the director of audiology at Enticare. And then we have Dr. Uh, Trisha Dubrowski. Dr. Dubrowski is uh, the clinical uh, D Director of Clinical Education. Sorry, Tricia. And then we have, and then we have uh, Dr. Uh, Kimberly Skinner, Associate Professor. And of course, you've already met uh, Dr. Perenbach. So with that, I'm going to turn the podium over to Dr. Perenbach. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mehta. And now I would like to act, ask Dr. Norm Gevitz to come to the podium. The mission of A.T. Still University is to provide whole person health care to treat mind, body, and spirit. Hearing is a vital window to understanding and interpreting the world about us and the role of the vestibular system in locating ourselves in space is fundamental in helping us to define and placing ourselves in the physical, social, and spiritual spheres. Your role in the healthcare system is therefore vital. You will become essential practitioners. All of you here who are receiving your white coats today will be entering a health profession whose members serve the most vulnerable in society. Children, the elderly, disabled veterans, the underserved. You will test profoundly hearing impaired children and be part of a team of experts overseeing the implantation and ongoing monitoring of cochlear devices which can make an incredible difference in such children's ability to learn, speak, interact, and function in the wider society. You will make a remarkable difference in the lives of the elderly who too often experience the diminishment of their social world through loss of communication with others because of hearing loss. A hearing aid is more than a mere technological device. It is a vital social bridge to family and friends, allowing our hearing impaired elderly population to interact with the world around them. You will also serve those who have become hearing impaired not because of natural causes, but because of trauma, through war, through occupation, or through unhealthy recreational activities. As a profession, audiology has grown because of the misfortune of soldiers experiencing profound hearing loss from their proximity to shell fire or bombings. Audiologists also treat thousands who labor in industries that have not adequately protected their workers from the frequent and sometimes unrelenting high decibel impact of the machines with which they work. And of course, there is my generation of rock music enthusiasts who attended concerts where the preferred amplified sounds on a normal scale of one to 10 were in the words of the fictional band Spinal Tap turned up to 11. Because it appears, <laughs> one of my generation, because it appears that there was nothing so pleasing than one continuous note lingering in one's ears hours if not days after the actual concert was over. And now, decades later, many in my generation mistakenly think that tinnitus is a chronic infectious disease they contracted while frolicking in the mud at Woodstock. At A.T. Still University, you are receiving preeminent training. Currently, more than one-third of all the audiologists in the United States have obtained their residential or online AUD degree from ATSU. To all of you receiving your white coats today, I will tell you that speaking for the university administration, we are proud of the audiology program and its faculty and staff, and all of us collectively are very proud of you. Congratulations.
Now I would like to ask Dr. Soha Geradot to the podium to introduce our keynote speaker for today. Good morning. It's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Brianna Thornton, a licensed audiologist and a fellow of the American Academy of Audiology. She earned her undergraduate degree from Northern Arizona University and her doctorate in audiology from A.T. Steele University in 2011. Her extensive experience in diverse clinical settings, including hospitals in Arizona and California, private practice, and educational audiology, not only shows her passion for audiology, but also her dedication to advancing patient care and professional development in the field. Currently, Dr. Thornton serves as the Director of Audiology at Anticare, an ear, nose, and throat practice here in Arizona. Since 2019, she has played a fundamental part in establishing audiological services in the practice's six locations, overseeing patient testing, treatment, and staff training in providing patient-centered care. In her practice, she strives to find solutions that are unique to each patient's hearing and lifestyle needs. Driven by her belief in the influential role of mentorship in shaping future audiologists, Dr. Thornton has been serving as a mentor since 2011. This experience has also been instrumental in inspiring her own professional growth. As a native of Arizona, she finds joy in outdoor activities, crafting, and cherishing moments with her loved ones. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Brianna as our esteemed keynote speaker. Good morning, distinguished faculty, proud family members, and friends, and most importantly, the Doctor of Audiology, Class of 2027. It is a profound honor to stand before you today at this momentous white coat ceremony, a significant milestone in your journey to becoming audiologists. I remember standing where you are today, filled with a mix of excitement and apprehension about the future, along with a feeling of great relief that I made it through one year of grad school. I recall being on campus more than my house that first year, I'm pretty certain my classmates saw me more than my parents, and I lived at home. <laughs> that being said, friendships expected and unexpected developed, which I'm sure is the case for many of you here today. I encourage you to hold on to those friendships and lean on each other throughout your careers. Three of my classmates and I remain friends today, despite living in different states since our fourth year of grad school. Not only did I get to hear about their, area, their different areas of audiology, but I get to laugh about their crazy kids and cows as wedding presents. We remain sounding boards for each other, as well as each other's biggest cheerleaders. We have been able to assist each other with different cases, fitting suggestions, and syndromes or disorders we have not experienced often. Take advantage of the opportunity to learn with your classmates and understand the connections and interactions you make now will remain with you through your careers. Now, I wish someone had told me one of the most challenging obstacles I would face as I transitioned from student doctor of audiology to doctor of audiology would be the talking. My husband will tell you I have zero issues talking. He might even prefer I do it a bit less. However, communication required during appointments is very different from everyday conversations. Those first appointments when you lead from start to finish without a preceptor there to assist or fill in the blanks can be challenging in regards to verbiage and the flow of the appointment. This area this being an area I found challenging, I want to encourage you to use your future interactions with preceptors, audiologists, and even other healthcare providers as learning opportunities. Take advantage of every interaction, positive or negative. They are going to assist you in your ability to provide trust-centered care and build long-lasting relationships with your patients. 
During your rotations, you may not always vibe or connect with your preceptor, but try to see it as an opportunity to gather information about how to, or even how not to, interact with the patients. In general, us as audiologists tend to be more analytical, logic-based thinkers. The top-down point A to point B thinking, it makes us great clinicians. However, to be the absolute best and be able to motivate our patients to change, we need to learn their story. Stories are gonna help us to build trust. So how will you get your patients to tell their story? By listening to your preceptor's choice, word choice, and watching the body language of the patients, you can start to develop how you will tell your narrative. By sharing your story, it will encourage your patients to share theirs. What phrases or word choices evoke understanding from the patients? Did the audiologist's words help the patient to accept their loss? Did it change their view on hearing loss? Did they understand challenges or did the patient become defensive? Today I will tell you it is much harder to learn a patient's story. Post-COVID, the atmosphere in clinic is very different. So learning how to foster these emotional connections will help you to become one of the best audiologists. There is a lot of competition for hearing aids and with the technology improving at a much faster rate, I would argue it has become even more important to build these emotional connections with your patients. These relationships are what will separate you from other avenues people are able to obtain hearing services. The empathy and bond you build with your patients will be the one thing that AI will never be able to replicate. Embrace every opportunity to learn and grow and never underestimate the impact your dedication and underestimate the impact of your dedication and kindness. The path to becoming an audiologist is not just a career choice. You are making a commitment to a life of service, empathy, and continuous learning. You are embarking on a journey where you will have the power to reconnect individuals with their world through sound. Each patient will bring unique challenges, but the joy and satisfaction of restoring or improving someone's hearing are unparalleled. Hearing loss is known to cause isolation, depression, and loneliness. It can also be the driving factor for a patient's negative or maybe outright angry attitude during an appointment. Keeping this in mind will help you to remain calm and patient as you work to help that individual. As I stated previously, clinic after COVID has changed, and I believe people walk in more on edge than ever before. More and more I find isolation is the root of this anger. People were forced to isolate, and now that they're able to go out and reconnect, they find they are not understanding those around them, so they remain isolated. Social interaction is essential for human beings to thrive. It provides emotional support, it fosters a sense of belonging, it reduces stress, and promotes overall mental and emotional well-being. Hearing loss separates us from people. So remember, you're not just treating ears. You are treating individuals, helping them to reconnect with their loved ones. Take time to listen to your patients, to truly understand their concerns and fears, because providing compassionate care is as important as your technical skills. Now I won't pretend that patient-centered care is always easy. It requires time, resources, and willingness to challenge the status quo. But the rewards are immeasurable. Improve patient outcomes, increase satisfaction, and a deeper sense of fulfillment for you as a healthcare provider. Remember, every step you take, every patient you care for, and every challenge you overcome will shape you into the compassionate, skilled healthcare professional you aspire to be. As you don your white coats today, remember what it symbolizes. This coat is not just a piece of attire. 
It represents the commitment you are making to your future patients, to the profession of audiology, and to yourself. Let it inspire you to approach each day with humility, empathy, and a commitment to excellence. I leave you with this. You are supported by a community of mentors, peers, and loved ones who believe in your potential. They believe you will embrace the challenges, celebrate the victories, and never lose sight of the reasons why you chose to serve others in their time of need. When you feel like giving up, remember why you started. Visualize your goals, feel the passion burning inside you, and let that fuel your determination. You are capable of greatness, and nothing can stand in your way when you believe in yourself. You are the future of this noble profession, and I'm very confident that you will rise to meet the challenges and embrace the joys that this career brings. Congratulations on reaching this significant milestone. I'm excited to see the incredible impact each of you will make in the lives of those with hearing imbalance disorders. Thank you, and once again, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Thornton. Now I would like to invite Dr. Kimberly Skinner and Dr. Shelley Baltadano to the podium as we present the white coats to the students. Alexis Carter. <laughs> Tiana Kamasadi. Estonian. Sabrina Garza Padilla. Jirasi. Now. 
Janowski. Alyssa Richards. when you did that, sorry. Uh, Morgan Roberts, Robertson. We appreciate that our students have supportive families, so thank you. Libby Sarah. Morgan Shems. <laughs> Stephanie Silva. Scari. Thank you, and let's give one nice round of applause to all of our class of 2027. Congratulations. And now I would like to invite Dr. Elizabeth Palmer to the podium to lead the students in the Doctor of Audiology Oath. I will ask the student doctors of audiology to rise and turn to page seven in your pamphlet and then repeat after me. As a doctor of audiology, I pledge to practice the art and science of my profession. As a doctor of audiology, I pledge to practice the art and science of my profession. To the best of my ability and to be ethical in conduct. I will respect and honor my teachers. And also those who forged the path I freely follow. And also those who forged the path I freely follow. According to their example. According to their example. I will continue to expand my knowledge and improve my skills. I will continue to expand my knowledge and improve my skills. I will collaborate with my fellow audiologists and other professionals. I will collaborate with my fellow audiologists and other professionals to assure compassionate and effective care of patients. To assure compassionate and effective care of patients. I will, to the best of my ability and judgment, I will, to the best of my ability and judgment, evaluate, manage, and treat my patients. Evaluate, manage, and treat my patients. I will willingly do no harm and will strive to see that none go untreated. I will willingly do no harm and will strive to see that none go untreated. I will practice when competent to do so. 
I will practice when competent to do so. And refer all others to practitioners capable of providing care in keeping with this oath. And refer all others to practitioners capable of providing care in keeping with this oath. I will aspire to personal and professional conduct free from corruption. I will aspire to personal and professional conduct free from corruption. I will keep in confidence all information made known to me about my patients. I will keep in confidence all information made known as a doctor of audiology, I agree to be held accountable. As a doctor of audiology, I agree to be held accountable. For any violation of this oath and the ethics of the profession. For any violation of this oath and the ethics of the profession. I pledge this oath with sincerity and on my honor. I pledge this oath with sincerity and on my honor. Congratulations, class of 2027. You may be seated, and after the ceremony, the students will remain here for some group pictures. And I would like to invite Dr. Tricia Dabrowski to the podium for closing remarks. Yay. You successfully faced the challenges of your first year. Congratulations. Take a moment to celebrate these incredible accomplishments with your families who have undoubtedly supported you on this journey. Your white coat signifies not just that you're nearing the end of your first year, but your readiness to move on to providing patients with the direction, care, and solutions that they seek. In their eyes, you're an expert. Challenge yourself to live up to that ideal throughout your career. As you continue your education, you'll face more challenges. I promise you'll be through the next steps of your journey in a blink of an eye. In no time, you'll be well on your way to the next pathway, ready to take flight and then to soar. Until then, remember, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, always listen carefully to the needs of your patients, rest, Take time for yourself, and don't forget to take time to feed your mind, soul, and body. And with that said, as the sun rises on your career, let's eat. Congratulations to the class of 2027. So I would like to release the audience to head up to our banquet room, which is up the stairs right there, and there's a door to go in, so you may get out of the sun and go up there. The students, I'd like you to stay here with the faculty to take pictures. Families, welcome to take pictures, but let's let the photographer get some shots, and then you can take some pictures also. Thank you. Thank you.